What up, everyone? Mr. Dan Tamray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, March 26, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Netflix's supernatural series Stranger Things was voted favorite TV show, and it star Millie Bobby Brown, favorite TV actress, at the Kids' Choice Awards ceremony Saturday night. Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle was deemed favorite movie, and its lead, Dwayne Johnson, was named favorite movie actor, while The Greatest Showman and Spider-Man Homecoming star Zendaya won for the favorite movie actress prize. Coco earned the favorite animated movie honor, and Jace Norman for Henry Danger won for favorite TV actor. Fifth Harmony was elected favorite music music group, Demi Lovato won the favorite female artist, and Shawn Mendes for favorite male artist. Ed Sheeran Shape of You was declared favorite song, Camille Cabello's favorite baker, uh, breakout artist, and BTS favorite global music star. Wrestler and actor John Cena hosted the event at the Forum in Englewood, California. The show aired on Nickelodeon. Writer, producer, brothers Donald Glover and Stephen Glover are no longer working with FX on Marvel's planned adult animated television series based on the Deadpool comics. A voice cast has not yet been announced for the small screen project about a missionary with superpowers. Uh, the cable network said in a statement to the Hollywood Reporter Saturday, due to creative differences, FX, Donald Glover, Stephen Glover, and Marvel Television have agreed to part ways on Marvel's Deadpool animated series. FX will no longer be involved with the project. FX and Marvel have an ongoing relationship through our our partnership on Legion, which will continue. The rap said the network ordered a 10-episode first season of the Deadpool show last May. Ryan Reynolds played the titular here anti-hero in the 2016 live-action Deadpool blockbuster and will reprise his role in the movie sequel Deadpool 2 May 18th. In addition to being a writer and producer, Glover is also known as an actor known for his work on the TV series Atlanta and Community. The small screen adaptation of Ray Bradbury's 1953 novel Fahrenheit 451 is scheduled to debut on HBO May 19th. The movie version of the literary classic is being directed by Ramin Brahani from a script he penned with Amir Nadiri. It tells the story of a future where the media is an opiate, history is rewritten, and firemen burn books, a news release from the cable network explained. Uh, Michael B. Jordan will play Guy Montage, a young fireman who forsakes his world and struggles to regain his humanity as he battles his mentor, Fire Captain Beatty, played by Michael Shannon. Sophia Boutel will play Clarice, an informant caught between the competing interests of Montage and Beatty. Disney's Theatrical has released a new trailer for its new Broadway musical Frozen, which is based on the 2013 anime, a blockbuster of the same name. The show about a princess queen who isolates herself to hide her magical, difficult-to-control powers to freeze things opened Thursday night at the St. James Theater. Frozen stars Khalees Levy and Patty Murin as estranged siblings Elise and Anna, Jillian Aladdin as Ice Skate Kristoff, George Hilderdreff as Snowman Olaf, John Riddle as Anna Suter Hans, Robert Creighton as the villainous Westerton, uh, Kevin Del Aguila as shopkeeper Oaken, and Timothy Hughes as Kristoff's father figure Pappy, and Ansel Perezzi as Seven the Reindeer. The trailer shows Princess Elisa um, initially anxious about her coronation, then Anna reveling in the celebration, which brings lots of new people and the potential for love into her life. The stage is later transformed into a frozen palace as Elise sings her signature song, Let It Go. Kristoff escapes a perilous fall from an ice bridge, and people-powered puppets Slevin and Olaf make brief appearances in the minute-long clip. Kate Hudson says Mom Goldie Hawn was a trailblazer for women in film. The 38-year-old actress praised Hawn on Friday's episode of Lorraine for contributing to women's progress in the entertainment industry. Hudson said of her 72-year-old mother, she, in the world of filmmaking, was quite a trailblazer. She was the first female producer to produce her own material. I don't think people really know what a big deal that was. She added, of women's progress since, it's moving forward. Definitely the dialogue's out there. That's for sure at this point. Hopefully with the dialogue 
dialogue, it will change. Hudson says Han raised her to believe she can accomplish anything she puts her mind to. Uh, she says, my mom always says, when someone says, no, you can't do it, you should just say, watch me. That is something that I, that I just grew up with, thinking that's just how you start doing it. Hudson, the daughter of Han and musician Bill Hudson, previously called Han her role model in an interview with E! News at the Screen Actors Guild Awards in January. The actress said, I feel lucky, blessed that I have a role model that I can call Ma. She added, uh, I had a lot of fight in me by nature. I think one of the things that my mom has taught me is to find compassion in everything I do. Kindness and that family is everything. Hudson will next star as Maggie Ziegler in Sister, which, which singer Sia is directing. Jennifer Garner brought out her saxophone on Reese Witherspoon's birthday. The 45-year-old actress dressed up in a marching band uniform to wish Witherspoon a happy 42nd birthday Thursday. Garner shared a video on Instagram of herself performing happy birthday. The star wore a red, white, and black outfit with a matching cap and pom-poms. She captioned the clip, Hey, Reese Witherspoon, I don't know why you're on my mind today. Hashtag happy birthday friend. Garner said on Thursday's episode of The Late Late Show with James Corden that she attended band camp when she was young. She shared an NSFW story about a trumpet player who was sent home after a hookup. The star told host James Corden, I went to band camp somewhere in the hills of West Virginia. She said, we did have a one time at band camp situation referencing to the American Pie quote. Oftentimes at band camp, you'll have your first experience with someone, some kind of juicy experience. With spoon's Cruel Intentions co-star Sharon Michelle Geller also also wished the actress a happy birthday. Geller shared a throwback photo from the 1999 movie. She wrote, Hmm, at Reese Witherspoon, I know it's your birthday, but I think we could try and pass for high school students. Just, to, just think about it. Hashtag happy birthday. Witherspoon thanked fans and friends in the post on Instagram saying she was feeling so much love on her birthday. The actress started filming season two of the HBO series Big Little Lies this week. Model reality television star Kylie Jenner has shared on Instagram a collection of selfies with her infant daughter Stormy. Jenner captioned the images, adding a heart emoji to the message, Stormy. The album has gotten nearly uh, 12.5 million likes since it was posted Friday. The three black and white photos show Len Jenner lying in bed with her face close to her daughter's. Both are looking directly at the camera. The 20-year-old Keeping with the Kardashian star makes different facial expressions in each picture and is wearing a full makeup, diamond earrings, and necklace that says baby girl. Stormy is dressed in a sweatshirt. Callie Jenner is the daughter of Chris and Caitlyn, formerly Bruce Jenner, as well as the half-sisters of Chloe, Courtney, and Kim Kardashian. She gave birth to Stormy, her first child with rapper boyfriend, Travis Scott, on February 1st. Edward Norton took to Instagram Saturday to give his account of an incident that killed a New York firefighter where, where Norton was directing a film Thursday. Michael Davidson, a 15-year-old, uh, 15-year veteran of the fire department of New York, died from injuries he sustained on the job. Two other firefighters were also treated for serious burns. Uh, Norton said in his online post Saturday, Many of you know that the crew of our film, Mother's Brooklyn, experienced a dramatic and ultimately tragic event on Thursday night in which a fire engulfed the building we were working in and an FDNY firefighter died at fighting the blaze. Thanks to the many, many people who have written to us supportively. Norton wrote and is directing a 1950s set noir thriller. He also stars alongside Bruce Willis, Gugu Mabafa Rod, Willem Dafoe, Alec Baldwin, Cherry Jones, Ethan Suplee, Leslie Mann, Josh Pius, Fisher Stevens, Michael K. Williams, and Robert Wisdom in the movie, which was inspired by Jonathan Lethem's novel by the same name. Norman went on to say in his Instagram message that media reports state that the fire started on the set of his movie are incorrect. He explained it appears to have started in the basement cellar of the building where we were working in. We were filming in a bar and an apartment within the building, and our crew noticed smoke rising up into where we were working. Norton also disputes accounts, crediting him with being the first, to, first one to smell smoke and raise an alarm. Uh, he continued, This is incorrect. I was outside setting up a shot outside the building. Our fantastic first assistant director was the first to notice the smell of smoke before anyone else saw it, and it was he and others on the crew who acted decisively 
and quickly try to locate the source of the smoke, evacuate Cass and crew, call the fire department, and then rapidly move our equipment and vehicles away so that the FDMY had clear access. I cannot praise the professionalism for our crew highly enough. Had our team not noticed the situation and responded and alerted the fire department with the speed they did, I believe the residents of the building above would have perished. And though we describe what we saw the FDNY do in our statement and articulate our feelings, it were, it's worth doubling down. I've never witnessed firsthand that kind of bravery. I'm in awe of that kind of selfless courage. It's devastating to contemplate that one of the men we watched charge in lost his life. Prayers sent uh, to thanks for the spirit and courage of Michael Davidson. Our team is committed to honoring him and assisting his family. And in due course, when we can determine with his family what form they like to take, to that, I'll pass along any information I have about a better five way people can contribute. Stanley Tucci and Felicity Blunt are expecting their second child. Felicity, a literary agent, showed off her baby bump Thursday at the New York premiere of Stanley's movie Final Portrait. Felicity, who already shares three year old son Matteo Oliver with Stanley, wore a colorful strip dress with an empire waistline. The expected mom was all smiles as she posed for photos with Stanley on the red carpet. Felicity and Stanley were joined by Felicity's sister, Emily Blunt, and her husband, John Krasinski, as well as Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Blake cradled Felicity's growing belly during a sweet moment with Felicity and Emily. Stanley told Us Weekly at the event, I'm trying to spoil her. Yes, of course, being very attentive. Uh, Tucci, who directed Final Portray, is also dad to twins Niccolo and Isabel and daughter Camila. He was previously married to Kate Tucci, who died of cancer in 2009 and met Felicity at, Emily we- at Emily's wedding the next year. Sally and Felicity wed in London in September 2012 after marrying in a several ceremony. The actor slated for a number of upcoming films, including Patient Zero with Matt Smith and The Sounds with Kern and Shipka. Filming has begun in Scotland this week on The Victim, a BBC four-part drama starring Boardwalk Empire alum Kelly MacDonald and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actor John Hanna. The contemporary legal thriller was written and created by Rob Williams, who credits include The Man in the Highest Castle and Casting Shadows. Its ensemble also includes James Harkness, Jamie Seavies, Carla Crome, Ramon Tercarium, Cal McAnich, Chloe Peer, and Isis Hainway. The synopsis notes, Anne Dean is the embryo mother of a 9-year-old boy who was mor- murdered 15 years ago by a then 13-year-old. Having campaigned to be told of the killer's new identity and whereabouts, she is accused of revealing his new name online. But what exactly is she guilty of and what is she capable of doing in her son's name? The miniseries is being directed by Neil McCormick, who has worked on The Long Walk to Finchley and Complacent. Um, the Elizabeth Kills Graffith, the BBC Senior Commissioning Editor for England and Scotland, said in a statement, Bold, original, and constantly surprising, the victim showcased perfectly our ambition for Scottish drama. Said in Edinburgh and Greenock, against the backdrop of the Scottish legal system, Rob's brilliant script will be brought to life by an extraordinary cast that features the wonderful Kelly MacDonald and John Hanna, whilst introducing James Harkness and other exciting rising Scottish stars to the BBC One audience. Logic's Bobby Tarantino 2 is the number one album on the U.S. album charts. Coming in at number two on the Billboard 200 album charts is Lil Yachty's Little Boat 2, followed by David Byrne's American Utopia number three, Black Panther the album music from and inspired by number four, and Judas Priest Firepower number five. Rounding up the top tier are The Greatest Showman Soundtrack at number 6, Meagles Culture 2 at number 7, Jimi Hendrix's Both Sides of the Sky at number 8, Ed Sheeran's Divide at number 9, and Post Malone's Stoney at number 10. Country music stars Mary Morris and Ryan Hurd exchanged wedding vows in Nashville on Saturday night after getting engaged in July 2017. The People magazine said it confirmed Morris. Uh, 27 and her 31 got married this weekend in the city where they met while co-writing a song for Tim McGraw about five years ago. Morris captioned the black and white photo of her and her fiance she posted on Instagram Thursday, writing vows, feeling sentimental AF, and dreaming of this guy being my freaking husband in a few days. On Friday, her released a song he wrote for Morris. Uh, he wrote in an Instagram post, I wrote the song for you, played it for you in Michigan the night I asked you to marry me. Diamonds or twine, no matter what, I'll be wrapped around your finger. I love you, M.M. Here's to forever. 
Miley Cyrus, Lin Manuel Miranda, Common, Andrea Day, Jennifer Hudson, Ariana Grande, and Demi Lovato were among the recording artists who performed at Saturday's March for Our Lives protest in Washington, D.C. ABC News reported Day sang her hit song Rise Up with students for Baltimore's Cardinal Sheen School at the rally against gun violence. She also teamed up with rapper Common to perform her son's stand up for something. Broadway Titans, Lin Manuel Miranda, and Ben Platt took the stage and offered a, sma- a mashup of Hamilton's The Story of Tonight and Dear Evan Hansen's You'll Be Found, EW.com cl- reported. Osiris sang her song The Climb, Hollywood Life reported. Grande, who experienced violence firsthand when a suicide bomber attacked her 2017 concert in Manchester, England, killing, killing 22 people and injuring dozens more, sang Be All Right, CBSMiami.com reported. Laval performed Skyscraper. Jennifer Hudson, whose mother and brother and nephew were shot and killed by her sister's estranged husband in 2008, closed out the evening with the cover of Bob Dylan's The Times They Are Changing. Student activists, teachers, and others gathered for March for Our Lives rallies around the world Saturday in support to call for end, to end gun violence. Paul McCartney said he attended Saturday's March for Our Lives protest in New York in part because his close friend and former Beatle bandmate John Lennon was shot to death. McCartney was wearing a shirt that said we can end gun violence when he told CNN he was at the rally just to support the people. Uh, the seventy-year-old, uh, the rather seventy-four-year-old musician said in Manhattan, "This is what we can do, so I'm here to do it." One of my best friends was killed in gun violence right around here, so it's important to me. Mark David Chapman is serving a prison sentence of twenty years to life for gunning down Lennon in 1980 outside his New York apartment building. Chapman repeatedly has been denied parole, most recently in 2016. Soon activists gathered for March for our lives rallies around the country Saturday to push for an end to gun violence. Film star Will Smith shared on Instagram Sunday a video of him dancing on a boat in Miami with recording artist Mark Anthony. Smith captioned the clip, hashtag bucket list, salsa lessons from at Mark Anthony. The Men in Black and Independence Day star did not mention why he and Anthony had been spending time together. People can be heard in the background clapping and cheering as Smith follows Anthony's moves. The video, which has already gotten 2 million likes, ends with the men laughing and hugging. Smith lately has been in Georgia shooting his new action thriller Gemini Man, which is set for a 2019 theatrical release. Pacific Rim Uprising is the number one movie in North America, earning $28 million in receipts this weekend. Box Office Mojo.com announced Sunday. Coming in number two is Black Panther with $16.7 million, followed by I Can Only Imagine at number three with $13.8 million, Sherlock Gnomes at number four with $10.6 million, and Tomb Raider at number five with $10.4 million. Rounding up the top tier are Wrinkle in Time at number six with $8 million, Love Simon at number seven with $7.8 million, Paul Apostle of Christ at number 8 with $5 million, Game Night at number 9 with $4.2 million, and Midnight Sun at number 10 with $4.1 million. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 2000, Billy Crystal hosts the 72nd Annual Academy Awards Ceremony at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. And Oscar crisis had been narrowly averted a week earlier when Willie Fullgear, a man who made his living recovering and selling discarded objects, found 10 packing crates filled with 52 gold-plated Oscar statuettes near a dumpster in the Koreatown section of Los Angeles. The, Oscar had, the Oscars had been stolen from a loading dock around March 8th after they had been delivered from the Chicago factory that manufactured them. Two men who worked for the shipping company were later arrested in connection with the incident. Full Gear was rewarded with $50,000 and two tickets to the March 26th festivities. Three Oscars remained missing after the Full Gear's discovery. One was discovered by police during a drug investigation in Florida in 2003. Grateful recipients of the recovered Oscars included Hilary Swank, who won in the Best Actress category for playing Brandon Tina, a young transgender man who met a brutal end in Boys Don't Cry. Angelina Jolie won Best Supporting Actress for Girl in 
interrupted, and the veteran actor Michael Caine took home the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Cedar House Rules. Uh, all of the awards, other major uh, awards of the evening, went to American Beauty, a darkly humorous family drama directed by Sam Mendes. It was the first film for Mendes, a young Englishman known for his work directing for the stage, including hit Broadway productions of Cabaret and the Blue Room, as well as for screenwriter Alan Ball, who had previously penned an off-Broadway play and written for sitcoms. It was Mendes' idea to cast the acclaimed character actor Kevin Spacey as Lester Burnham a middle-aged man stuck in a dead-end job and an unsatisfying marriage to an uptight real estate broker played by Annette Bening. Things turn uh, uh, turn for the dramatic after an equally dysfunctional family moves in next door, compete with a drug-selling son and a rigged ex-Marine father, and after Lester becomes obsessed with the friend of his teenage daughter. At the Oscars, Ball won in the Best Original Screenplay category, while Spacey triumphed as Best Actor. Benning was also nominated in the Best Actress category. American Beauty also took home the evening's last two awards, Best Director for Mendez, and then the coveted best picture ball followed up on his american beauty success by creating the acclaimed hbo series six feet under while mendes directed such films as the road to perdition in 2002 jarhead 2005 and revolutionary war uh, 2008 last project starred his ex-wife the actress kate winslet and as your entertainment report for Monday, March 26, 2018, I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tamri Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. On Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report. Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.